Hello everyone, thank you for joining my presentation. I'm Mohamed Kishawarzi. I'm going to talk about detailed multi-physics modeling of a T650 cylindrical lithium-ion battery. This is an ongoing project between Electric Vehicle Safety Laboratory at Temple University and Dassault System Corporation. I'm going to talk about the battery cell that we, we, we are going to see here in this presentation, which is an A-T650 how we extracted the geometry and how we created them all. And then I'm going to talk about the mechanical test that we did on the components and the whole cell and how we created the, these models. Um, it is going to be followed by the electrical and thermal tests and the model that we created in Abacus. And at the end, I'm going to wrap up with a brief conclusion and future steps. So, in this electrification era that we are living right now, we are using batteries everywhere, but we still need them to be more powerful, to take us down the road, up in the air. And, but at the same time, we need them to be safer. We, we don't need them to catch on fire when, when, it, when they are with us. So there are numerous studies happening right now to improve batteries, especially lithium ion batteries and on different types of battery cells. So to name the different type of battery cells, we have PAL cell, elliptical cell, cylindrical cell and prismatic cell. The focus of this paper is the most common type of the uh, lithium ion batteries which are using in electric vehicles, the cylindrical cell 18650. So, what I'm going to talk about is a multi physics detailed model of the 18650. And why it is important is that the numerous studies are happening on different aspects of the lithium ion batteries, naming electrochemical properties, thermal, electrical, and even mechanical properties. But when, when you look at the whole cell, it is, it is a couple phenomena happening at the same time. So uh, the mechanical, let's say, for instance, the mechanical damages can uh, induce uh, thermal runway or uh, electrochemical decomposition. So it is, it has great importance for battery industries to investigate these coupled phenomena. So why we are doing it is that first we wanted to build a universal model can, which can be used in different simulation of mechanical, electrical, thermal, and electrochemicals. And most importantly, we wanted them, we wanted this model to be used in a couple simulations. Uh, another feature of this model in future can be a tool to go from detailed to homogenized model, which can significantly reduce the computational cost. How we are going to do it? First, we characterize the geometry of the cell by the CDS scan that we got uh, from this 18650. And then we are going to calibrate the mechanical properties of each of the layers separately. Uh, by the test that we did at Temple University, and then at the end, uh, we are going to validate the model in various loadings of mechanical, thermal, and electrical uh, scenarios. So, as you can see here at the top, we see a CDS scan of this 18650 that we are building here. Uh, we took the CDS scan data extract the uh, thicknesses, the geometry of the uh, top parts, the bottom parts, the location of um, the jelly roll inside the casing, and we build this model in the abacus. As you can see, the location of the tabs are also important. The, the jelly roll itself inside, inside of the uh, cell has a spiral way. This spiral consists of four layers of anode, separator, cathode, and another separator which are rolling all together 
which makes the general, which is, which is which we can see here inside inside this uh, in this CDSK model. So we created the same exact same model that we can, we could see from the CDSCAN and we created this uh, this same model. But let's talk about the mechanical properties and how we calibrated the mechanical properties of each of the layers inside the general. So we condition the cell first, we discharge the cell, we open the cap, we extract the general from the casing, and then from from the general, which I, as I said, it, it consists of anode, separator, cathode, and another separator roll all the way to form this cylindrical shape. We extracted samples and we did a bunch of testing on each of the components. The first set of tests was tensile tests on each of the layers. Uh, we, we put them in a tensile machine, we, we pulled them and we extracted load displacement data for each of the components. Uh, for the compression test, we stacked them all together and then we compressed them between two flat plates and we also extract the load displacement from these tests as well. So to model, to have the same behavior on the component level, we created the anode and cathodes in three layers. So the three layers, which is consistent with what the reality of these layers are. Uh, in between, we have a current collector, which is aluminum for the cathodes, usually, and uh, copper for the anode. And we have two coatings on top and bottom of the uh, these electrodes. Uh, and the separator is also polypropylene uh, material. So in the abacus models, we use crushable foam material properties for the coatings. And for the current collectors, we use elastic elastic plastic material properties. But for the separators, which has an isotropic in-plane uh, properties, we use honeycomb material in abacus. So to briefly describe what are these, the crushable foam material using the Despanda Fleck formula to for the evolution of the yield surface, as we can see here, and the honeycomb material in the, the stress values for the tension is in the positive strain values and in the negative strain values we have the compression curves. So based on the test that we had, we calibrated both of these properties for our electrodes and we did we simulate the same procedure as we did in the testing for, for our electrodes. So, uh, we created this single layer and then we pulled them uh, at both ends and we extracted the load displacement. As you can see, the test and simulation results are uh, following a good trend and the model that the layers are validated in tension. So for the compression, we did the same thing. We stacked the layers all together and we compressed it between two flat plates and we extracted the uh, load displacement data from simulation and we come as we, we can see to compare it with the simulation with the test result we have a good validation as well so the next step for us was to right now we have the calibrated material properties for each of the layers we could build the general and do some tests, some mechanical testing on the general itself. So we had the general, we compressed it at temple between two flat plates. And as you can see, the, the orange line is the experiment. We extracted low displacement from the experiment and we did the same thing for the, for the whole general this time as well. And then we compressed it as well. As you can see, the blue line, it shows a good trend for capturing the low displacement value of the general itself. The next step for us was to use, right now use this whole general model 
inside of the casing. So right now we have the whole model, which consists of the uh, the tab, the the tabs, the the top cover, the bottom one, the shell casing, the whole jetty roll inside, and we compress it between two flat plates and we compare it with the experimental results that we had. And as as we can see, it is also following a good trend. So by so far, we we are confident about the electric, the mechanical model and. It is it meaning that it is validated in for the mechanical simulations. As a next step uh, for the electrical properties, we had to calibrate the electrical conductivity as an input for the abacus model. If you look at the literature, there are a wide range of electrical conductivity for the anode and cathodes, and it is a trade secret for each of the battery companies so they have their special formula for the composition of the um, electrodes and it, it varies between company to another company so if if ones want to um, do a um, precise simulation of the electrical properties they have to do mechanic ele electrical measurements on the electrodes themselves so what i did is that i use a silver paste at four points on top of uh, one sample and four on the bottom of it and connected these these two by two together and then I swap a current between each of these points and I extracted the anode and cathode uh, electrical conductivity of the layers. I use this electrical conductivity in the in the electrical model of the cell and we connected the bottom of cell to a zero potential the top of the top cover we connected 3.65 volt which is a nominal voltage for this battery cell and as we can see at the bottom picture we could see that the, the tabs are well connected we could see the electro potential flowing through the jetty roll the, through the current collectors and the this this is the electrical model that we have so far so as a conclusion batteries are multifunctional materials so each of the components should be calibrated separately and precisely um, in our model detail in our detailed model, we could, um, we give a good prediction of the mechanical responses. And for the electrical model, uh, we developed an electrical model for our detailed uh, from from the detailed uh, mechanical model. Our future works would be using this well calibrated model in a coupled electrical mechanical simulation. Uh, of a damaged cell and to see how if if we punch if we do punch indentation three point bending axial compression on the cell how would be the electrical properties of each of the components or a whole cell affected by these and these damages uh, another step for us is to do the electrochemical simulation for the intact and also the damaged cell and as a last step would be doing the validation of temperature changes as a result of the above loads so thank you for your attention and i'll be glad to answer some questions thank you